Um, continuing on the theme would the, of whether the problems would be uh, effectively addressed through other non-regulatory non approaches, um, it might be more effective to provide greater assistance to uh, private landlords. Regular communication with the private rented sector. Newham run a regular landlord forum every quarter. I believe the most recent one was in June. Um, there's a, there are other ways that the information can be got to the private rented sector on how things can be developed. Through newsletters, possibly through incentives. Gloucester City Council to have a draw after every landlord um, uh, landlord forum and they offer a free mem life membership, free annual membership of the uh, National Landlords Association as a prize, which I think is an excellent idea. Um, <laughs> the key, I think, is engagement with local landlords um, to help to support those who are doing it right and to help those who want to do it right and may not have the knowledge and the skills to get there. Um, we have in the past found difficulties as the NLA in uh, ensuring finding local council, different departments of local authorities working together. Um, and sometimes we find that the local authority isn't sure whether the private rental sector is a, is a problem or a solution. We are increasingly finding examples of where the local authority is working with the private rental sector because it sees it as a source, a valuable source of additional housing. We've done a lot of work recently with crisis to develop private rented sector access schemes to enable. Um, them to help house homeless people, and that is, and crisis need to be comfortable that they are putting people into good quality properties. We've also, we're also aware, um, and we had somebody uh, from Berry Local Council at our conference last week, where the local authority is getting more involved in actively working with the landlord and the tenant to support the tenancy. What the landlord wants is a good tenant who pays the rent and looks after the property. They don't want to get into difficulties. And the local authority equally wants to ensure that the tenant stays at home. So they are working together to resolve some of the issues, to, to make sure that the, the both sides of the, of the tenancy work together and support them both. That has come to fruition in, some th in things such as private sector leasing schemes. And I know Newham has uh, four private rent rented sector leasing schemes. We in the NLA have helped other local authorities develop them as well increases the available housing, brings housing that might otherwise be left empty um, onto, the, on, into the, onto the market so that we can, uh, help, it can be used for housing people on low incomes, local housing allowance, again homeless as we talked about, I talked about the crisis. Also helps improve the stock, quality of stock and the quality of management. Uh, social letting agencies perform a similar function, gives the, uh, particularly helping um, the accidental landlords, people who find themselves having to let out property because of the circumstance, rather than through a conscious decision to invest in property and develop a lettings business. Local authorities can also help with financial assistance and incentives, grow, grants and loans to help with property renovations, reduce fees for accredited landlords. We will, in shortly, um, see the government putting forward the Green Deal, and I think that is a really excellent example of um, financial assist assistance and incentive to the private rented sector. Yes, there is a regulatory uh, requirement coming down the line. Uh, from 2016, it will not be permissible to refuse a reasonable request to improve the energy efficiency of a rented property. From 2018, it will not be permissible to rent a property grade F and G. But, having established that requirement, the government is also in the process of setting up a system whereby landlords will be able to um, acquire, get the money up front to make the improvements to the properties so that the tenants benefit and that they don't, aren't subject to the cost without return. So, moving on, um, would more holistic approaches to the private rented sector be more effective? Um, we started to touch on tenant <coughs> engagement, and I think that's particularly important around the issue of antisocial behaviour. I mean, who causes antisocial behaviour? I think you've got to actually look specifically at the problem. What do we know about it? Is it the landlord? Is it the tenant? Are there other factors? We're currently looking at a proposal for selective licensing in another area where we are concerned that the area designated happens to have a lot of pubs and clubs and bars in the area. And so you ask, is the problem there related to the private rented sector or is it related to some of the commercial activities around? And how actively, uh, uh, one of the things that we do here quite frequently is 
the landlord should be the should make sure that the tenants behave properly. Now there is a certain it, it is possible that, that well possible that the landlord could remind people what their responsibilities are, but how actively can that tenancy be managed and at what point um, does the active management of a tenancy start to intrude on the tenant's right to quiet enjoyment of, his tenants, of their tenancy. We found a great deal of benefit from uh, tenancy support officers who have worked, if you like, as an impartial liaison to prevent tenancy breakdown, supporting both the landlord and the tenant and um, giving them tough love and occasionally a few home truths to make sure that the tenancy continues. Um, one thing which uh, will need to be created if the selective licensing proposal goes through is the creation of a tenant referencing scheme. One of the requirements of the selective licensing scheme is that all landlords are will be required to demand references from their tenant. Now, as the NLA, we would urge every landlord to seek references on their tenant, and we provide a tenant, tenant referencing service ourselves for our members. Um, but in some areas, it's particularly difficult to it's particularly difficult to get references for tenants who may have come, potential tenants who may have come recently out of prison, may have spent time in bed and breakfast, may have been on uh, local housing allowance. They, the references can only be secured with the support of the local authority. So that is a very important thing, uh, aspect of the scheme that will be needed. Um, we are aware of several tenant passport schemes which have been set up by the local authority working on a simple traffic light system to give an indication of how the tenant has behaved in their previous PRA, uh, private sector tenancies. Um, landlords, don't in our experience, don't necessarily uh, reject um, red light tenants, but they, do, um, they, do, they are aware that they will take a different kind of management from those who've got a green light. Um, the landlord's ultimate sanction against tenant behaving badly is, um, is eviction. But that simply moves the problem elsewhere. The tenant still has to find somewhere to live. Um, the local authority has the kind of powers that can tackle the broader issues through the enforcement action, anti-social behaviour orders, litter abatement notices, penalty charges under the Noise Act, if it's a noisy neighbour. I think there's also uh, opportunity for the council, for the, for the local authority, to work with the community. Um, quite frequently, um, quite frequently, Proposals such as this are a response to the perception um, that there is a problem. I think one of the things that needs to be looked at is there empirical evidence that this, that is true. It really is working like that, and to publicise the enforcement action that goes on. Um, there may be a benefit to also seeking greater advice or assistance to specific communities. Migrant communities may have different expectations of rented property, may have problems communicating with the landlord if they, they don't share a language. So there are further things that can be done. So, just to conclude, we understand you is concerned about prob the problems it perceives in the private rented sector. Um, and we have several questions which we believe it's important to answer if a selective, if, or a selective licensing scheme goes forward. That is, are the problems we're looking at truly attributable to the private rented sector? Is selective licensing the best way to deal with them? Are there other, more effective options which could be, tri and should be tried first? And is Newham's proposal going to satisfy the strict legal criteria necessary to seek approval?